Hey, just a quick update on the uh, CNC conversion. Got stuff into the box. Um, got a power switch, power plug-in, and an e-stop button installed. Have the power supply, the drivers installed um, into the box. That went pretty well. Still trying to decide on how I'm going to put the computer part. See, I got the Raspberry Pi here. Have a uh, an Arduino Nano with a four relay board um, to be able to run stuff. Testing that out basically ran into a problem though. I was going to mill out the uh, panel mount for the connectors, these little guys right here. And uh, if you hear screaming, don't worry about it. It's just my kids making a ruckus upstairs. Uh, so anyways, it's going to mill those out, it's going to make them out of a little stainless steel plate and discovered that there's a problem um, with my x-axis. It's not running right, there's a lot of grinding noise. Um, so I'm going to have to tear it apart. thought I would uh, make a video of what it takes to actually remove the x-axis table from the saddle. Um, I've spoken about it briefly in my pre one of my previous videos during the install. Thought it'd be interesting to show it. So basically, it's a it's these two screws. We got an Allen screw, set screw right here. That um, one on this side and one on the other side back here, a three millimeter that loosens this block right here. Um, so it's pretty simple if you know what to do and how to do it. So we're gonna do a video on it. All right. So to take off this table section here. You need a three millimeter Allen wrench and a 10 millimeter uh, regular open end wrench, open end box end, whatever you got. Um, I've got another one, it's probably going to be a little better. Open end box end. So, to do this, you're going to take off these four screws, you're going to back them out. These are the jib set screws. So, I'm going to take my 10 millimeter wrench and loosen that. Each one of these um, the nuts on there that lock those set screws in place and then if needed use the allen wrench to back them out they should become finger loose here in just a second okay so we're going to do that these little guys right here one two three four now we're going to loosen them up just a touch touch more by hand um, so you basically want to make sure that the jib is free you back them out because usually the jib develops a uh, little burr or set in point where the screw contacts it, a little dish, and you want to make sure that that's clear. Get these set screws for the ball screw and the ball nut that rides in the saddle, you loosen those up so that that nut and the shaft of the ball screw can run free. Side note, I'm currently working on getting a second camera. Okay, now underneath I can, you can hear that, that's the ball nut wiggled, wiggling free, that bracket, so we know that's loose. Okay, now this, yep, everything slides a little more, and there it is, there's your jib. I'm going to set this off over here to the side, and I'm going to move these out of the way because I'm going to take this whole thing and flip it up. So we're going to zoom back out a little more. So this is what I was talking about when you go to disassemble it. If you take these four screws out to do this whole rebuild of this table and clean it out, I found this to be the simplest way to get this whole thing apart. Um, you don't have to undo anything on the ends yet. You just undo these four, you slide the jib out, undo those two allen screws that are under here, underneath here and then rotate so if you rotate this table kind of slide it towards you there it is whole thing just came free so now I can bring it over to the side set her down and I've got full access now I can work on that independently if I need to use my allen screw or allen wrenches over here take out these two nuts on the end to disassemble all this 
and I'm not trying to work against taking a lead screw and then threading it all the way through and all that mess. You can do it all right here, a lot cleaner, a lot simpler. So now that we've got the table off, I'm going to try to replicate some of the problems I was having with it. Basically, it sounded like it was binding and grinding um, when I was trying to run the x-axis back and forth. Even loosening the jib completely, it would bind down. Don't know what's causing it, um, so we're going to see if we can replicate it where we can get a better look at this uh, running back and forth here. Um, don't know if there's a problem with the bald nut or if it's where it is, but what I've done now, is, or since I've gotten it taken off, I went ahead and reconnected the controller, um, fired up my Raspberry Pi, opened up BCNC, which is the controller software on the Pi through remote desktop, which is pretty cool, and this is now, I have the pendant uh, application up and running. So this is BCNC pendant, and it's going to run, and I can sit here and control the thing from here. So if I run it, actually, apparently something, oh, probably help if I turn the power on. Put some power to the motor. Oh, there it goes. I see a lot of wobble in that shaft. That may be the answer right there. Good grief. Well, we may have found our problem. The question is, how do we fix it? So let's run it for 50. Wow, look at that wobble. So something is definitely not right. question is, what is generating the wobble? Is it this end out of alignment? Or is it this end down here that's off? Hmm. Guess we'll have to figure that one out, but that's, that's where we're at. First things here is, uh, we'll take off the motor end and take a look at this assembly here, coupling. See if there's something out of uh, alignment there. Or if it's the motor itself. Somehow I got a bad flea bay motor. So that never happens. Good thing I bought the four pack. Okay, there's that. Alright. Well, there's the motor. Get my tablet back over here. Looks like I'm meant to pull the motor off the bracket. Probably put it, uh, clamp it down to the bench, get the indicator on it. Just see if we've got wobble in there. Um, to really nail that down or eliminate that option. The other thing to do is check this. Of course, I guess that might answer it right there. I mean, turning this by hand. Look at that. I mean, you can see the wobble in it. So this is not being held true from this end back here. So I'd already thought about trying to replace these bearings, but the question is, since this is the push-pull force back here, what do you do to address that? And the other thing, ooh, yeah, 
I can I understand I think why that's grinding and binding on that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna disconnect the camera here. So pardon the wobbly. Okay. So let's look you down in here. Okay, we're gonna zoom and let's get their focus. You see that shiny line under there? That right down in there? That's where the bearing or the nut is riding against the table on this end. That would explain a lot. I do not have that down on this end. Yeah, just on the one end. So that would explain why I seem to be getting the binding. Like having it bind up a lot on that one end. So we'll have to dig into that next. Alright, I think I've gotten to the root of the problem here. So here's the the issue. So this is the thrust washer from here, thrust bearing half right there. And it's got a little uh, chamfer inside here. And if I measure the outsides of the edge, basically the smallest diameter that I can tell is going to make contact with the end of that shaft. I am at 0.5 Let's call it 0 .550. Uh, now if I go here and measure the end of this shaft, right here, that is way outside the diameter of that shaft. So basically I'm getting minimal contact on the end of this bearing. I mean, yeah. I just need to get new bearings I think is probably the right answer. I thought that was. Maybe I've got them in there backwards or something. But uh, I guess we can check that. Is the outside bearing any better? Why is that inside bearing so much different? So it looks like, yeah, there's. See, that fits right. And I'm thinking that's probably the answer. I probably got those in there backwards, or at least I need to switch them around to get the, the one that was on the outside on the inside. Well, there you go. What do you know? It was that simple. So let's uh, put it back together and see if it works. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it here on that one. Flip this. And then I think what I want to do is take this one like so. We're going to take the inside of this one. Ow. Pardon my head. And go check this diameter. That may be, yeah, that may be the problem right there. I think I got those okay wampus on that. So, yep, that was it. So, to answer that question, I have put those in, in the wrong sequence. So the ones with the inside diameter. So, lesson learned. Pay attention to the way you take things apart so you know how to put them back together. Lesson learned. Make sure you get this right side up. You gotta put that back in there. Wipe the grease off my fingers. Tighten her up and see if we have a solution. Thirteen millimeters. Snare her up a little bit. Snug, but not too snug. Tighten that guy down. Yeah. Looks like there could still be a little bit, but nothing like it was. 
question is, does the bearing still ride on the bottom of the table? So we're going to have to put her all back together. And let's, uh, so you all can see what I'm talking about. Zoom in so you get a better view of that shaft. Focus. Okay. So before it was spinning all over the place, but now just a teeny little bit of wobble. I think that's, I think a lot of that's me. The real question, I'll get the motor put back on here. Let's go ahead and do that. Get these motor mounts. And uh, another thing I learned, realized the other night, I did this once before, hang this end off of the table, makes it a little bit easier to work with. Fire up my pendant. Power back up. Okay, that's on. Alright, let's see what she does. Oh, that's much, much better. Still seems to be a little wobble in it. Nothing like it was. camera what do you know now let's go 20 okay so I should be able to run a full uh, 100 actually let's do a F 1000 G send this in the right direction. Yep. Very nice. I think we solved it. Well, I won't bore you with the details of me reassembling this beast. Then again, I might. We'll see. So here's a view of these two set screws that I referred to. Um, it's this one and this one that you have to get underneath with that three millimeter and undo or loosen and tighten because the slot on the ball nut, this chunk right here, is what fits in that slot. So that slot, that tab there gets clamped down in that slot. That's what keeps it or holds it so that the uh, as the motor spins the axis or the uh, table slides back and forth. So.